everybody, this is Sportman16, and first of all, I would like to say I hope you guys watched the most recent video that I posted earlier of this video's recording, being that of March 3rd, 2019, and I also would like to apologize for not uploading anything in like 8 months. It's just that, well... It's really just a case that I just kind of stopped caring for my channel and all that because, let's face it, when you pretty much have like next to nothing to work with in terms of content, you pretty much have nothing else left to upload. But with that all aside, I just want to take this time to bring in my first talk video in, again, like over eight months. So the thing that I do want to talk about is, well, Pokemon. And the thing that I want to talk about is the most recent Pokemon games that were released for the Nintendo Switch, which is that of Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. But more specifically, Let's Go Eevee because that's the version that my sister got. So first of all, I would like to say that the um, Let's Go Eevee game was, in a way for myself, the first generation one game I've ever played because even though I was pretty much born before the first original gen one Pokemon games were released I never played them like at all because the first Pokemon game that I have any recollective memory of playing was that uh, crystal version but I didn't know what Pokemon was at the time so I just played it and well didn't think about it since then. It wasn't until Generation 3 was when I really got into Pokemon. So, yeah. So, what are my thoughts on the Let's Go games? Well, for being my first time playing a Gen 1 game, I will say I have mixed feelings about the Let's Go games. Um, one of the positive things is that it is very visually pleasing seeing the Pokemon models in more higher definition quality, seeing them with m much more smoother lines. I mean, I had nothing wrong with the models of how they were presented on the 3DS. I really had no problem with that. But just seeing them in more high definition quality on the Switch was much more visually pleasing. Um... The environments look nice. The battle animations look, look were looking pretty spectacular, and the music wasn't all that bad either. But that's probably like the only positive I could think about the Let's Go games being visually pleasing, because, like I said. I have mixed feelings, but unfortunately, it's a bit more of a negative feeling. Um, the thing of it is, considering the fact that for one, the wild encounters were not what I was hoping they would be. Because I was hoping that maybe they would still be able to let us battle the wild Pokemon encounters. But no, it's just simply, you... You just simply encounter the Pokemon and try to catch it. You don't you don't battle it. Because the only wild battle encounters that you have are the legendary birds and Mewtwo. Okay, technically the the, the, the Snorlax too. You do battle the Snorlax and then catch it, so I guess there's that. Um Oh uh, yeah, there is one other positive that I completely forgot about. Was that that it was? It was a nice little touch to see the wild Pokemon in the overworld, so that way you could actually choose what Pokemon you want to encounter. So I guess that's nice. But if any other positives come around while I'm talking, I'll I'll mention that. But bringing in more of the negative aspects is that the again the wild encounters. It was not like I hoped, but I wasn't going to hate the game for that. But the other negative involving the wild encounters is some of the Pokemon that 
when you catch them, some, some of them I'm happy that they just stay still. But the ones that, well, I guess say if they're like slow jumpers or slow movers, they're not the worst to deal with. But it's but it's kind of a, a little bit of annoying that you have to like follow them in order to get the catch. And then there's like the fast movers, like the Pokemon that, that are like moving like freaking crazy, like say Magnemite, Magneton, um, Porygon, um, Pokemon that, that jump constantly. Those ones are like the most annoying to get. Well, that and the legendaries, because, well, they're the legendaries. <laughs> Let's all be honest here. Um. The other thing is, um. I'm trying to think. Of. Uh, oh, man, it's kind of hard to decide here. Um, the fact that it's also Gen 1, well, I guess it's not really our fault, but the fact of. Of the region itself being, I'm really sorry to say, is that the Kanto region is just bland. And there's only like a few handful of areas in the entire Kanto region that really stick out. Two that I can think of off the top of my head are the Seafoam Islands and Lavender Town. Well, okay. I guess Cinnabar Island wasn't all that bad. Fuchsia City looked nice. I mean, they really tried their best to make more of the towns and cities stand out. So I guess that's another positive for them, or for the games, that at least they made the cities and towns look nicer. I guess. Okay, now that I have thought about it, I do have a few more positives in mind. Um, the one that, well, for one, it's a bit more immersive with your partner Pokemon, whether it be a Pikachu or an Eevee. The fact that, um, you get, it's like, when you interact with them, it's kind of like po Pokemon Refresh. Like, you get to pet them, you get to feed them berries, and all that. It's very immersive, and I'm going to openly admit this, interacting with your Pikachu or Eevee is just so gosh darn adorable. But for me, it's like, I kind of start to like more of Eevee because of how absolutely of an adorable little fuzzball it is. And the fact that, um, what was actually interesting is that, um, in the beginning, I nicknamed my Eevee Gulan because, um, I read into Eevee's, um, Bullopedia page, and it mentioned something about, like, some kind of mythical dog-like creature named Gulan, if I can bring it up pretty real quick because that's what I pretty much nicknamed my Eevee because for one I'm not usually the best when it comes to nicknaming Pokemon but I mean like if I have something then um, some, like some kind of name of mine then I'll go for it like what it says right here for Eevee's, Eevee's origin that Eevee shares its traits with various mammals specifically Phoenix Fox or Phoenix Fox dogs and cats, it could also be based on the Gulan, which is a mythical dog-sized Scandinavian creature with a coat of brown fur, a cat-like cat head, ears and claws, and a fox-like tail. So that's what I first named my Eevee, but then I started to realize this is kind of a silly, this is kind of a silly name to name my Eevee, so... I just decided, like, well, since he is little and and all that, I <laughs> really couldn't come up with anything better. So I nicknamed my Eevee Little Man, like like Lil Man. So yeah, that's what I nicknamed my Eevee. So yeah, um, some other positives I can think of is that it's pretty cool that they did bring in f some good amount of writable Pokemon. Like, um, you got, like, three Flyers in Aerodactyl, Charizard, and Dragonite. Um, some Water Rides in, um, Lapras and Gyarados. Um, and a cool bunch of other rideable Pokemon, like Rhydon, Persian, 
Star Starmy, <laughs> Machamp. The funniest one was that of Snorlax, where you and your partner Pokemon are just latched onto Snorlax's belly and he just moves along. <laughs> that one right there is the funniest to me. And I will also admit that it was pretty cool that the Pokemon following you coming back since since like the Gen 2 remakes was a nice cool thing. I will admit that was cool. Um, another small little positive was that when it comes to your Pokemon in your party, it was pretty cool that you could be able to change their name like like that. Any given time you want, you can change your Pokemon's name. So that was also a nice little touch there. But now for a few more negatives that popped into my head. And it's evolving around, well, I'll, I'll just pretty much say. For one, the fact of having no abilities for all the Pokemon is pretty much a double-edged sword. Because on the opposing side, I can't be able to use my Needle King and use Earthquake on a Weezing and wouldn't have to worry about the Levitate. But on the other end of the spectrum for me is that I would not be able to send out my Gyarados and get an Intimidate off. Or having the starters having their abilities kick in pretty much of over of like Overgrow for Bulbasaur, Blaze for Charmander, and Torn for Squirtle. But it was also kind of nice that they allowed the, the starters to be catchable. And also that whatever version that you had, like um, Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee, pretty much the, the opposing partner Pokemon is pretty much available in the game, pretty much right then and there. But the fact that they behaved like, like the Pikachu and Pokemon Yellow, where they just simply straight up refuse to evolve no matter what you do, well, it's kind of, uh, cause like I would have liked to have my um, partner Eevee and like evolve it into like my favorite Eevee illusion of Jolteon, but that's all fine. And if I remember correctly, that your partner Pokemon actually do have perfect IVs all around. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Um, also, another thing that I just did not like was. Not only do the Pokemon have no abilities, there's no held items whatsoever. Not even the Mega Stones are held items. It's just an option within battling. Well, I guess we could just be happy that we even got Mega Evolutions in the Let's Go games anyways. <laughs> but the thing of it is, um, the only ones you get prior to post game are the starters. Because all the others are post game because you won't be able to go after Mewtwo's uh, Mega Stones until, I guess, after you catch Mewtwo and Battle Green. Or I think it's just you Battle Green and you get both of the Mega Stones. Um, all the other Kanto Mega Evolution Stones are available at the um, Indigo Plateau where, it's revol where you get them from... The maniac dude who's dressed like a slowpoke. Um, do keep in mind that both or all the mega stones are, I think, about thirty thousand poke dollars each. Please do mind some outside noise because I think uh, I do believe like a big old truck just drove right by because well a whole bunch of decent amount of snow just kind of fell here recently at the time of this video is recording. So sorry about that. But yeah, um, but yeah, pretty much like the only, um, let me, let me figure this out here, okay, okay. The only, the other problem with the fact of having no items and the only items that you have are the berries that would help you, um, catch, which is basically like the raspberries to make the Pokemon easier to catch, and, uh, who I forgot the name of the other two berries because I know one is there to help the Pokemon calm the heck down when it's moving all about and the other one where you have more of a chance to get more items when you catch the Pokemon um let's see 
Oh yes. One of the things, one of the big things for me was that of um, shiny hunting. Because that was one of the big things that I wanted to know because, again, I'm pretty much a borderline obsessed shiny hunter. So I was wondering what what are the rates for shiny Pokemon in this game, which thankfully it was the same for 1 in 4096, but the fact that there is only one stinking method in the entire game, which is catch comboing, which Honestly, I didn't mind. I mean, it wasn't a bad method. Because I will say that method does work out. Because in terms of my Let's Go file, I think I have about three or four shinies in the game. But the thing of it is, if you're wanting to do the catch combo in your shiny hunt method, make sure to have a lot of patience and also some good amount of cash in your pocket because it can be quite expensive for catch comboing because because the fact of having to get more pokeballs as you go and or really more specifically getting more lures because the thing of it is with catch comboing basically what you need to do is that you need to catch the same pokemon species for, for a good combo to start. Like basically, if you're wanting to say shiny hunt for, uh, I guess like say Onyx or something, or Geodude, um, you would you basically go into the area where you can find Geodude, which, which is most likely pretty much cave areas, and basically in order for you to get the maximum Chain, or the maximum combo, or basically the combo needed to get the highest um, odds possible for a catch combo is 31. So, pretty much you would have to catch 31 Geodudes in order to have the maximum chance. Because by going on to Cerebi and going to the, the Shiny Pokemon section of the Let's Go page, it will basically tell you that um, with the lure, basically with the lure um, you use it, it's basically like a reverse repel. Instead of, instead of repelling Pokemon away, the lure basically brings in more Pokemon, basically in this case, m more Pokemon would spawn. Um, one place that I actually would recommend in terms of hunting for a Pokemon there relatively quickly is that of Viridian Forest. Because let me tell you, you would get like, like, you would get like Pokemon out the wazoo in the Viridian Forest by using the, the lure. It's just, it's just crazy. You would get like maybe like 20 or so spawns in there. I, I don't know for sure. But yeah, basically with the shiny rates, um, the lowest shiny rate you can have with the maximum combo without like the shiny charm or the lure at all basically you get a catch combo of 31 or higher the shiny rate will be a 1 in 341.3 but but it adds on once you have like the lure and the shiny charm so if you have your max combo your max catch combo and you have a lure on you your chances of finding a shiny then are a 1 in 315.08 then if you have the shiny charm, which which what you need to do in order to get the shiny charm is that you at one point need to have owned every Pokemon in the game. But Mew, Meltan, and Melmetal are not required for completing the decks to get the charm. So the odds of a shiny Pokemon with the highest catch combo with the shiny charm is a 1 in 292.57 and then combining that basically if you have your maximum catch combo and have the shiny charm and have an allure on your chances of finding a shiny then are a 1 in 273.07 but basically with a catch combo you don't really need to stop at 31 
you can pretty much keep going for as long as you want. Now, pretty much in terms of the one Pokemon that I wanted to hunt for um, was that of a Geodude, and I was able to get a Shiny Geodude. Um, that and a Nidoran male. The other two weren't what I was looking for, but I was happy that I got them. Because the first shiny that I was able to find via the catch combo method was out of a Weezing in the abandoned Pokemon Mansion in Cinnabar Island. Because I was actually um, catch comboing for Shiny Rattata, but then, we but then Shiny Weezing showed up. So pretty much the thing of it is, with catch comboing, um, you could actually get a maximum combo of 31 of the same Pokemon and well the chain can be quite forgiving that once you get your maximum combo you could just go off somewhere else and go hunt for something then because once you're off in another area all the pokemon that spawn in have an equal chance basically that that one that one in 341 315 292 or 273 but the thing of it is um, there are only three ways that your catch combo chain will break or technically four um, one is catching a different species of Pokemon that is that is basically not the one you were comboing on two the Pokemon runs away um, Okay, I guess it would be three. Is that you shut off your game. And no is not putting it into sleep mode because if you do put it in sleep mode and then come back to the game, your combo is still there. No, I'm basically meaning like um, hitting the home button and completely closing the software. That will end your combo right there. So yeah, like I said, um, chain or catch comboing is forgiving. Now, here's something really interesting, is that when I was, I do believe, I think it was in the Seafoam Islands, where I was basically exploring the Seafoam Island cave just to find where Articuno was. And the funniest thing, that when I got off the ladder to the next level, right Basically, to my right, boom, Shiny Graveler popped up out of nowhere. And what's even funnier is that it was full odds. I had no catch combo whatsoever. I was legit shocked that a Shiny Graveler appeared up out of nowhere. And what was even funnier is that it reminded me of the first legitimate shiny Pokemon that I ever caught. Which was that of, you guessed it, a shiny Graveler when I played Y version for the first time. I entered Termia's cave, used Rock Smash, and then seeing that it was an encounter, and then boom, shiny Graveler. And what was even better, it didn't blow up before I caught it. It was just memories, man. Memories. But, yeah, it was just a really awesome experience. So, yeah. Basically, catch comboing, if you want to give it a try, go on ahead. But, again, make sure that you do have some patience and some good money in your pocket. Because trust me, you are going to be buying some lures. And some Pokeball and Pokeballs if you need to. But here is um, an interesting thing um, to note about. Um, I actually found this out from watching other YouTube videos about this. Is that if you all recall the um, those um, golden berries, there's actually a place in Cerulean Cave where you can actually farm the Golden Berries and Ultra Balls. Okay, technically Pokeballs too, and Great Balls. 
Um, it's actually on the second upper floor of Cerulean Cave. Basically what you would need to do is that, considering the fact that these berries and Pokeballs are hidden, um, you have to check these sparkling circles, and once you get close to one, keep your eye on either your Pikachu or Eevee's tail. Once it starts, once, once it starts waving its tail really crazy, that's when you know that a hidden item is there. And within that floor of Cerulean Cave, you will most likely be finding the golden berries. You may find a few, like you'll be able to find some Pokeballs, some Great Balls, some Ultra Balls, and if you're lucky enough, you could be able to find 10 Ultra Balls. And here's here's the big surprise. You may have a, you have a very small chance that you could find in the glittering spots a Master Ball. I'm not kidding. Because Cerebi themselves said it. That there is a very small chance that you could find a Master Ball in the glittering spots of Cerulean Cave. I myself have not found one, but eventually I'll, I'll find one. But basically, the second floor of Cerulean Cave with all those sparkling spots in the big room, that is a good place to go and farm golden berries. And if you don't want the golden berries, they do sell for a pretty good price too. Like, if you sell like a decent amount, you can get like a good ten, a few tens of thousands of dollars out of it. And, and another way that you can be able to farm money is either um, go to Pier City, Go to the left side of the museum, I believe it is. Talk to the lady who has a slow poke. And basically, basically you just um, pay or just watch the slow poke by squatting and staring at it intensely. And then she'll give you a big pearl for it. Or go to Fuchsia City. Um, you basically go to the house to the right of the Pokemon Center. Um, you use the, the strong push secret technique or whatever. There's going to be a diglet behind the stone. You interact with it, and the, and the diglet just somehow gives you a nugget. Um, okay, uh, I, <laughs> I completely went off track of the, the positives and neg negatives about the game. And kind of turned it into a guide or whatever. <laughs> My absolute apologies for that. Um, anyway, um, I think probably one other negative thing that I will talk about that I really did not like at all is that when it comes to the Pokemon and their moves, their moves are quite lacking in some places. Because I really just don't know what else to say. Is that the move pool for the Pokemon are a bit more lacking than, say, Gen 7 for what they have. For like say, uh, I, I guess say Gyarados. Like basically, like one of its best physical water moves that you can give it is out of Waterfall, which really to be honest is not that bad. But I won't, I like, I can't be able to get like Ice Fang or something like that. Or, uh, it's just, it's just really a pain for the fact that Pokemon movesets in the Let's Go games are a bit more lacking than what I would like. Um, now, to be talk, not a little talk about the legendaries. I mean, it's great that with um, the Kanto birds, you pretty much don't have to wait t till after or wait till post game to get the legendary birds. Because I think after a point in the game, you could actually go and get the legendary birds at that time. But do keep in mind that they all three of them are level 50, and with Mewtwo, I believe it's level 70 you have to fight it. Um, and one of the more forgiving things is that when fighting the legendaries, um, they do not run away, no matter what. But also keep in mind that when you're trying to catch them, at points where they get um, riled up, they'll they'll have like some sort of power, f like power, sh power field or whatever around them, 
that would um, prevent you from using berries on them. But again, be ready to capture those legendaries because they will be hard to capture because, again, they're legendaries. Oh, and also do mention that when you're taking on the big interactable Pokemon, pretty much the Kanto Birds, Mewtwo, and Snorlax, you're going to be on a five minute time limit, so you, you got to act fast. And I think if I know that with Mewtwo, that either if you fail to catch Mewtwo or the time limit is up, you don't have to worry because you will given you will be given like numerous opportunities to catch Mewtwo over and over again if you fail to do so. Or basically you just do the typical thing and just save in front of the legendary and if you fail to capture you can just reset. And that's one other thing that when it comes to shiny hunting for the legendaries, because yes, Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres, and Mewtwo are not shiny locked in the games. Um, there is no soft reset method for the Nintendo Switch. So basically it's just a regular reset or hard reset if you want to put it like that. Basically you would have to exit out of the game completely and start it up again. That's basically the only way that you could be able to reset for the legendaries. So with that, you better hope you have a lot of patience or you just have some really, really damn good luck that you can get it like within like the first 10 or so encounters. And I think that's pretty much it for what I have to say. But one thing that I will say for last is that the game can be quite challenging at parts because in some ways, the AI does know what it's doing at times. I will say that. But the AI is definitely more on the smarter side. And I think Gen 7 was also the same way. So I guess that'll pretty much do it because I guess there's nothing really much else to talk about. So like I said, the Let's Go games I have mixed feelings about. I'm not saying that the Let's Go games are bad games, but at the same time, they're not exactly great games. I do kind of get the feeling, and I know some of you are going to be probably upset about this, but I kind of feel as though that the Let's Go games are kind of filler games. But they're decent filler games. I mean, they do have their positives, but they also have their negatives. But, again, I just felt like the Let's Go games are filler. So, please, people in the comments, please do not chew me out for this. I gave, like, the most honest opinion I could about them. So, that'll pretty much do it. So, thank you all so much for, well, listening, because, well... In terms of my webcam, I feel as though that my webcam is kind of serving more as a microphone at this point because if I tried to use the webcam program, there would have been a possibility that I would have just glitched out or something and just shut off by itself, which I absolutely have no idea why it does that. So, pretty much, if there's any talk videos in the future that I will do, that I might do, my, my webcam will just be a microphone at this point, and also... I do apologize for any background noise, minus my fan, because, well, if I didn't have this fan on, then the room would get quite warm in here, because apparently, weirdly enough, I have the warmest room in the house. Go figure, or something like that. And, yeah, so thank you all so much for listening to what I had to say about the Let's Go games. Um, the next talk video that I do have in mind is that of the very recent reveal of Generation 8, and what are my thoughts about it for the first trailer direct that they gave off. So, once again, thank y'all so much for listening. Sportman16, 